Chris Morton. This young man going very, very wide around the outside. And he's going to do it. And he's done it in the most beautiful piece of cornering. Morton went outside Ivan Major. His only was stood still. And that really was an absolute something that haunts me because it was such a well, probably one of the best races that I've written but one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made. It's very, very tight out there. Autry breaks away. Following him round the outside goes Chris Morton, the white helmet colour. Thompson, I think, has moved back into third place and Morton has ridden the most prodigious corner there. He's gone from third to first in one lap and that was overtaking of the highest, highest policy. But the last meeting suddenly became yeah incredibly significant and for me being in the last race um, it was coming very sharply into focus that this was the last race and it was as I'm going out for it uh, it suddenly became one of the most important races of my whole career. And the lion is beginning to roar because here comes Chris Morton and outside or inside, it doesn't matter to him. Well, I'm, I'm talking on the, on the back of having gone through some of the most difficult years of, of, of my life. So, I mean, well, let's just have a look at that incredible last lap from Chris Morton again. Suddenly has gained ground on Eric Gunderson. He sails around the outside of him with everything going and then picks up on Egon Mudor. I don't think the West German was looking for him at all. And around the outside again, in a really perfect piece of timed overtaking. Provided some fantastic races uh, that I'm very proud of. And, and that was really what the, uh, the great thing in Speedway was, was being able to do that, to, uh, that challenge of, a, of, of four laps where you, you know, mess the start up, but finish first. Um, yeah, the, the I mean, it came out of the blue. My first trip to Australia because I think uh, John Louis at the last minute decided he wasn't going, uh, and so I was offered the opportunity. I was only 18. I went, was back a few times. Unfortunately, I was I was in in amongst the, the, the debris and watching it be demolished, which was which was painful. Um, you know, I think that there is pictures that you can see of it being just being crushed, and it was so so sad really because it, because it, it had been such a great place. It would be much better for it to be developed as a um, as a stadium. That maybe did other things in Speedway, but uh, you know, that wasn't what happened. 
So yeah, and winning that was uh, it was fantastic for because it, it was the when we when we won it and, and we, we you know we, we get off the park and you when we embraced each other. I think that was like the the realization in that in that moment that this was it to you know scraggy house kids from Partington had, had beaten the world and, and uh, you know when you look at where we come from and where we got to that was quite significant. That, that was yeah. It was, Great so we watch out for Chris Morton on the outside. He's made some electric starts today. Uh, sadly, that's not one of them, and this is the Morton that we all know. Chris Morton at his best from the back, and something tells me he's not going to stay there for too long. The American Riders, what a last-minute flurry they're having. Certainly short-lived, though. Sean Moran is Lansking out in front. Sean Moran is second place. Here comes Chris Morton. He's going to try the inside. And he's got the better of Sean Moran. One down, one to go, says Chris. And he's such a gritty performer, is Chris Morton. Two races going on at the same time. And it looked just out of the camera position as if Morton and Frank got the better of Lansking. But no, Kingy is who still leads it. King in front, but there's Chris Morton trying the inside. He tried it once before, and it didn't work. Oh, what a super scrap for the very final rest of the day. And indeed, just on the line, with elbows touching, it's a win for Chris Morton. Before we say, are you going to Bellevue at all? This is 93 now, start of the new season. And I think it was about in the April, uh, and he... Um, he called me up and said, yeah, you go, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll be down there later. So, I'm close to the to, to Bellevue, and I'm at the, the lights, it's quite a nice day in April, I think. Got my window down, but the lights near, near the cluster of lights, near, near Kirk Zoom Lane, near where Dan lodges. Um, and it, I'm quite late for the meeting, you know, I'm, I'm, the, the warming up. And I get this whiff of, of the fuel and the oil, you know, that castor oil smell. And I suddenly thought, God, I've missed this. You know, and I'm missing it. And that and that was something that triggered the, that I wanted to do it again. Um, so, it was about, it was about six weeks later, I think, that um, Neil Machen was, was interested in me riding for Sheffield. Flying start from uh, Dixon and Stepman and Chris Morton, a bit of a spoiler in the middle there. But two separate battles and uh, Chris Morton right in with a shout here. Oh, getting past Stepman, tremendous stuff from Morton. And uh, Rennie House has got ahead of Dixon, so this is going well for the Tigers. And has Stepman got it in him now to possibly catch the four winning league international? A fantastic piece of overtaking by Chris Morton. These two are going hammer and tongs here. Stepman Fields is still in with the shout. So it all goes wrong there for the invaders. And a great bit of action there. Uh, Morton just got a surge of power there. We just haven't seen this kind of riding really from anybody in recent matches due to the uh, rather inconsistent track surface. And there was a case in point. Chris Morton there. Uh, vintage stuff by him. <laughs> 